Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated, and you join me in the aftermath of the death of the High King of Ireland, Grian Grafador, and the succession of his brother Ruacorn. In the last episode, we saw the death of uh, Geralt, Grian Grafador's half brother, and Ruacorn's half brother, uh, who was who we were backing for uh, succession to the High Kingship. In the episode before that, we saw that Ruokon was a deviant, which cemented our decision not to support him, but following uh, Garrel's death from Bubonic Plague, we rode in behind Ruokon, and following Green Grafador's early and unexpected death from, uh, from old age, Ruokon now ascends to the Shamrock throne in the midst of a war that he cares little about. Ruokon has sat in the shadows Ignored by his father, ignored by his elder brother, um, cast aside and, and driven to, or not driven to, but given a cold and undefendable outpost in Norway as his inheritance on the death of their father, Flansinna, one which fell easily and rapidly to the Swedish, and which Green Grafador made very little of an attempt to defend, absolutely no attempt, he surrendered it uh, quite easily, and then handed Rokon, uh, the county of Ulster, with its stone-walled fortifications, which nobody really understood anything about, so we can't build anything there, uh, because it's a, a feudal holding. I think it's fair to say that Rokon has grown bitter and angry, at his treatment, and this is one of the reasons why he's he has became a master torturer. A torturer of men in a way that his father, Flancina, could only have dreamt of. Flancina was known to be proficient with the whip hand, a mere child in comparison to the skills that Ruokon has developed. We can already see that Ruokon has done something quite interesting. If we come to the lineage, uh, we can just about see that he has he has he has a different style of crown to his predecessors. I think he's marking himself out as a, a different leader to his uh, to his father and his brother. So let's see what the um, what the early days of of uh, reign are like. I should also just point out that, of course, um, High Chieftain Kukurka has has inherited overwhelming territories from his father. Uh, he's quite powerful. Uh, younger brother Scanlon has just inherited the chiefdom of Leinster, which brings with it the earldom of Leinster, which means, am I right in saying that Athlone has been... Oh no, uh, sorry, um, uh, Athlone is in Mead. Okay, no, never mind. So, um, Scanlon is the high chief of Leinster and the the uh, Earl of Leinster, and then uh, Kukarka Moor, after his affair with a 62-year-old woman, has uh, has inherited a, um, a massive chunk of land. And so we continue as High King Ruokon. I'll pause very quickly, put the game down to its slowest speed, and as you can imagine, we have quite a lot of things to consider. At the end of the last episode, I was saying that, um, that here's our two armies, and I was going to march one to attack uh, Dunkeld and the other to attack Angus just the way that they'd be nice and close together if we were if we were hit by um, by any forces that suddenly that suddenly raided us. Angus has this place has what? Three gold? I thought it had more. There isn't a lot of gold up here I'm afraid at the moment. Um, but we're progressing nicely with this war. Again like I said a war I don't think uh, Ruokon cares too much about. And interestingly enough, I'm not too sure how, how this works, but yeah, the dynasty head Kukurka has became the dynasty head. Fair play to him. Uh, he's still our champion. He hates us. Uh, 16, there he is, his uh, adulterer trait. He still hasn't had any children. And it's entirely possible that we might we might be supporting Kukurka for the high kingship. Now, the problem is that Ruokon, of course, is, is 51 years of age. Uh, he does not have long left. His brother has just died at 61. 
his father was 66, so it's interesting, it's going to be interesting to see who we who we support, and already we've lost um, a thousand troop capacity. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, both our own troops have dropped, I think, and um, our, our alliances, of course, are non-existent. So here in the lifestyle tree, we can see what Ruokon has devoted himself to, and like I said, he is a torture par excellence. Uh, his father... Flancina had only ever gotten these these four in the torture tree, but he has gone the full way down. Dread, gain per tyranny. There's a there's a, a fear tax, uh, forever infamous. So his dread at the moment is at zero. Um, so I think I'm going to go for the intimidation focus. He's going to have to rule through fear and dread. And uh, so I'll accept that. And I think we're going to come down, we're going to continue. So he can do seduction schemes. Uh, seduction scheme chances. So I, I think we're going to continue continue going down this, this section. Uh, the only other thing is that we can do the fabricate hook scheme. So I think there's going to be a lot of backstabbing and backroom wheeler dealery going on here under the rule of Ruokon. A uh, bit of a, a depraved man. What we should do, of course, first of all, is actually look at Ruokon. So he's a trusting, forgiving sadist. He is homosexual. Uh, an intricate web weaver. Uh, he has stuttering. I can't remember if he inherited that from somebody. I don't think so. Uh, he's an eager reveler. And he is a torturer. Uh, here's his wife. She was a... I don't want to say she was a nobody. But um, I don't think she was, she was related to a count or anything. We were in trouble trying to form alliances. And we basically just went for, for anyone that we thought would give him children. And um, yeah, pretty much here is, here is his, his main son, who is, who is very unlike him. Uh, temperate, diligent, and trusting, which is, which is similar to him. He's a skilled tactician. A lot of people were supporting him for the, for the kingship. But uh, for now, it rests in the hands of Ruokon. So we have one councillor position to fill. And this was the position that was actually held by Ruokon. Um, our nephew, uh, Kukorka, Kukorka Moor, the son of Green Graffador, he wants a position. But he's not good at anything. He's good at Mar- well, he's not great at Marshall. Uh, definitely not that good at Marshall, so I think we're going to, we're going to put our brother, Archaeid, in there. Um, so he's our half-brother, but Archaeid and Ruokon would probably have built a bit of a, a friendship, because the two of these were down at the bottom of the lists of, uh, people who I would have thought would succeed, or, or, um, uh, hold any major entities... The likes of Green Graffador, Maul Shocknail, and Geralt, they were the three that I was focusing on. I, I do remember that Ruokon's name popped up a couple of times uh, early on when Flancina was thinking about changing the succession away from Green Graffador, especially when uh, when he began to fear that Green Graffador was planning to kill him. But, um, but yeah, in, in general, uh, Ruokon has kind of been, um, has been kind of excluded, and so has Arcaeid. Indeed, now we're in a position where the only other children of, um, of Lancinas that are still alive, Katrina, fair play to her. She's 67. She's outlived her father. She's outlived um, King Helgi, who took her as a concubine. She has outlived both of her children. Uh, she has outlived a good chunk of her family. So... The only male children of uh, Flancina now still alive are High King Ruokon and Arcaid. Uh, Arcaid doesn't have any land, so that would make Arcaid's nomination currently awkward. And as you can see, my primary heir is actually uh, my son Koning, Ruokon's son Koning. There is... Um, uh, what's his name? Rukon is automatically supporting him, and one other vassal is supporting him. So currently, Koning is in the lead. Uh, he's what's he gonna inherit? Uh, Ulster. 
And I think uh, there's another brother then that's going to inherit nothing because we don't have any more land. But um, more than likely, in a minute, we're going to have Galloway and Lennox. So they're going to become um, Ruacon's personal possessions. And at that point in time, I'll, I'll see what we're going to do. I'll see, I'll see how we're going to, um, how we're going to deal with this. At the peak of his power, Grian Graffador was able to mobilize uh, 16 knights with champion effectiveness of at least 200%, if not higher. We're now down to 7. And uh, we see many, we see many of the, the top names. Um, a lot of them that I can't actually pronounce. I might need to find a wife for this guy, even though he is stupid. But, uh, yeah, we have, we don't have a great list of knights. If we start pushing down, there's, there's Koning, which is 11. So our bottom knight at the moment, um, bottom ranked knight, is a 14. And there is Kukurkamur, who will probably work his way up the, uh, the rankings soon enough. Well, that's what our military looks like. We're going to unpause and we're going to continue the war. I've reassigned somebody to lead one of the armies. I can't remember who. Uh, and poor Katrina. Ah, Katrina, No. Katrina, Katrina and Rukon getting into a mad old argument. The first thing that Rukon does is gets into an argument with his sister. Um, I put Briog. The guy that... Oh man, I can't remember. Who captured him? Was it Flansina or was it, um, was it Green Graffador? We put him back in charge of, of this army. And this one here then is being led by the chieftain of Alech. Who, since Sir Vertuk's retirement, is now our top, our top knight. And he has cancer, and he hasn't provided us with a child. Uh, or he hasn't provided himself with a child. And, um... Uh, Garrel's son, Flansina, has now became the new heir. So we're gonna we're gonna probably see lots of changes for a while until we can kind of get an idea of who it is that we want to um, that we want to succeed for the ship. Um, uh, Lyaknon is still searching around High King Grian Graffador's court, looking for hooks and things which could be used to to force people to vote in favor of Ruokon. Um I do not believe we will ever find anything either. Well, you caused enough trouble by finding out that uh, Kukurka Moore was sleeping with an old woman. So, very well, you know what's best. So, now that he's in power, Ruokon is going to arrange a marriage to the daughter of Duke Ivo, the lunatic, of um, West Franconia. And uh, see if we can get some troops together. And we're doing that just as Sweden has landed... Oh, it's landing a substantial army to siege back down Galloway. So we'll probably try and continue our siege up here. Or we'll see what these guys are going to do. Uh, we have an alliance formed. If they're moving in to give battle, we had probably better follow them. And Kukurka has created a faction to install one of his sisters, if I'm correct, onto the Irish throne. Kukurka, you'll be... you'll be getting a letter from my solicitors, if you don't cop onto yourself. We'll bring this army down anyway. Do you know what? We'll bring the two armies. We'll bring the two armies. We'll bring them into Lanarkshire, and we'll see what the, um, what our brother's allies are going to do. They are indeed, by the looks of it, they're going in against the Swedish. So we're a good bit back, but we got good numbers. So if anything happens, it doesn't look like it. It looks like the Swedish are going to be defeated. I won't say handily enough. Yeah, they'll be defeated handily enough. Never mind. Yeah, 
There we go. We get to do absolutely nothing. We join in at the very last minute. A rather inauspicious start to Kukurka Moore's military campaign. We we had been looking forward to this guy for so long and seeing what he would do as a, a marshal or as a warrior-like figure, a giant. Look at that, we can't even see what type of a, a hat he's wearing. And uh, yeah, no kills in, in that in that um just wandering in there at the at the very last minute. We're going to march one of our armies anyway over in this direction and see if we can cut off these guys and just give them an old slap in the face. So Lyaknon, our spy master, is causing even more trouble. He discovered this the last time, that our marshal uh, was having an ex extramarital affair with um, Green Graffador's ex-wife, who, if I am correct, is near death. Because she had a bad reaction to food at Green Grafador's party, the one that was held for the, the the final conquest of Ireland. Ooh! And of all the people to be saying this, this is uh, Ruokon's Ruokon's um, statement. God will judge these sinners. So it doesn't look like there's going to be any immediate effect. Only uh, a lot of people are going to lose uh, opinions of each other. The chieftain oh, gets labelled as an adulterer. Lyaknon, you're causing a lot of trouble. So our army has gone in here against uh, some raiders. I'm pulling this other army back just in case these guys um, uh, coalesce. They seem to be heading out to sea. And Ruokon is known for his dedication to faith. Yeah. I do think that Ruokon is going to try to hide behind a, a facade of holiness. I think it's entirely possible that Ruokon might try to conquer Iona and liberate Iona and use that as a kind of a, a shield against his, um, a shield I suppose to put over his more, his more depraved behaviours. So that large army is coming in again? Well, I won't say it's a large army. I think both of our units might be hitting it in a second, or one, one is going to bypass it. That's a good idea, that's a good idea. And our army should continue on to Angus. And of course here are two prisoners. The husband and wife duo, the uh, chiefess of this region here that is being sieged back down. Am I right? Oh no, Desmond has came in here. I think Desmond is raiding it. Desmond, there's nothing there. Um, and her husband. And Green Graffador had left them in prison. They've been there just over a year. His intention was to um, to ransom them. So this is a rather interesting effect on um, on Ruokon. He will gain 35 stress because he is sadistic, forgiving, and trusting. We might gain some dark insights. Uh, yes, we're going to torture him. So he loves to torture. He loves to torture, but he also hates to torture. He is a, a kindly forgiving sadist and there you go his father was uh, was known for for having a good old whip hand as well the rack was his father's preferred method um there's a 15% chance that he's going to become a lunatic he's going to gain a lot of stress and of course rulecon suffers the first mental break of his rule uh, something I think that Green Graffador was, was ab able to, to stave off quite well. But Ruokon, as much as he desired power, is not a man fit for power, and it is getting the better of him. Recently, I feel like I am not worthy of the Kingdom of Ireland. Do other rulers doubt themselves as I doubt myself? 
I try to be a good, forgiving High King, but still my subjects are afraid to come to me with their problem. Others of my station seem to be the confidence of hundreds, and I don't know how I can make my people trust me like that. Damn this universe! for raising one so poor as me to such heights. So he can become charitable. I don't know if he becomes charitable or if he just gives money away. Um, he can become contrite. No, he doesn't become charitable. He becomes... Um, monthly income goes down 15. Stress loss goes up 20. Diplomacy goes up 1. Contrite, ooh, intrigue goes down, stress goes up. Uh, or uh, stress loss goes up. His intrigue is quite good. His intrigue is quite good. I must uh, confess my sins publicly. Well, that's the great thing. I was going to say it's the great thing about being an insider Christian. No, you mustn't. You mustn't. Um, Catholics express their sins publicly. Insular Christians do it in private. And it was the insular Christians that, that developed uh, private confessions. Yeah, so I suppose if he does want to be seen as a, as a good and just um, insular and Irish ruler, I think, yeah, giving to charity is probably going to be the best. So we're going to lose 75 gold. Uh, he's going to lose 10 stress, which isn't as much as the um, as the, the giving to, to public stuff. But we will um, we'll do that. And so, Dov Lemma has approached us in the gardens and has said that she has noticed our interest in the arts of subterfuge. And she is going to become our Jedi Master, our mentor in the ways of subterfuge. So we're going to gain uh, 50 Intrigue for the lifestyle experience, and I'm not too sure what a, what a mentor is going to do exactly. There's a poor old depleted Swedish army wandering around here. We're going to continue our sieges of these areas. Uh, the Swedish forces are leaving Scotland. We're up to 92% war score, so there's a very good chance that once we siege down these two areas that we'll, uh, we'll have enough to bring this war to an end. So our Archbishop has converted Irishir. And um, fantastic job. We'll just see what uh, the Cathar heresy is, is taking over uh, Wales. I think we will actually pull them back. And um, when I say pull them back, I mean bring our bishop back to Ireland. Uh, Dublin has embraced Irish traditions. Good job, Connell. And we will get... Um, we will start to work on driving the Cathar heresy out of Ireland. And if we come and look at our cultures, I think we're pretty good. We're going to send Connell back up now to... Um, to, to drive the Norse culture out of the one bit of, bit of Ireland, uh, restore it to, restore Alloch to Irish culture, and uh, and his job is done. So we have some points to spend on our lifestyle, the intrigue lifestyle. I was going to continue down this direction, but uh, considering that, considering that he's, um, he's 52 years of age, I'm not too sure how much seduction he's going to be doing, um, so we might do the truth is relative, enables us to fabricate hook schemes and find secrets may also fabricate hooks. So we might, uh, we might go for that. So if we look at our vassals here, one of our most important is indeed High Chieftain Kukurka. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start a sway scheme against him. See if we can get the big giant of a man to like us. Uh, we've sieged down Angus, and with that, we've effectively brought the war to an end. It'll bring us, um, I think it'll bring us another seven gold, so we might wait the 36 days to siege down that place. And Sir Vertuk, the poor man, has died. Uh, died from his wounds. So possibly, possibly that's why he had he had uh, resigned with a while. I haven't seen his name pop up in any battles. He definitely wasn't a knight for us. But Sir Vertuk has died, and Osiri. Uh, now goes to his son Rudon. Uh, Sir Vertuk was um, was a knight that I think Green Grafador landed. 
and our new wife is pregnant. Fair play to uh, to Ruokon. Um, the the French are, are trying to hunt down the this Swedish army, but you know what? We will enforce our demands. We have a hundred percent war score to the vile High King Ruokon. Oh, you don't know the half of it. Tales of your misdeeds are told from Ireland to Cathay. You are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. So be it. So we almost have a contiguous Irish holding in Scotland. Now, Green Graffador's next plan would have been, and it's pretty much actually what uh, what Rukon's next plan is as well, is to uh, to take this um, this region here, this county here, and then we'd have a contiguous contiguous uh, strip. But then Green Graffador would have been hitting Sweden. Well, he probably would have taken here, then Yeland, um, and then depending on how how alliances or not alliances, but how um, how truces ran out, he would have mopped up the rest. Taken here, taken here, and with these, we would have had enough, and this this part of uh, Jorvik, with, with that we would have had enough to um, to re-establish the, the Scottish crown. By and large, the death of Grian Graffador has brought to an end any plans that, uh, th that the Irish have for now for the re-establishment of the, the crown of Alba. We can see that the Isle of Man has split off from... Uh, Pows, I think, was, was who it was part of before when they also controlled uh, Ulster. I've offered him vassalization. Now, uh, Man is de jure part of the the Kingdom of Alba, so he won't accept. So we're just going to have to do our good old... Can't do a uh, conquer the duchy. Because uh, we're less than illustrious and we are losing a lot of prestige. We are losing prestige... Left, right, and center. What would it cost us? It'll cost us even more prestige to declare. Oh, we can't do it full stop. Um, then we'll have to go with a conquest of the county. And um, we're going to get hit with a fame penalty of 150 because we don't have the prestige. But um, we're going we're gonna to rapidly try and get this, um, get this done. He does have a sizable army. He does have a sizable army. And if he's able to raise that army... Uh, on man, it might be it might be difficult for us to get in there, but we'll um, we'll see what way things go, and we declare war. So they have indeed put together a much larger force than ours. Now they're moving off the island, and they're probably heading for to siege down Ireland itself. And here is one of our allies, uh, two thousand nine hundred men. He's bringing into the battle. So I'm not too sure what we're going to do. We might we might try and we're we're having our army march towards um, the Isle of Man at the moment. And I've also summoned some champions because we're badly in need of them. And the Manx, we can't really see them, but they've started to siege down Ulster. Now we're coming in um, to siege down Man itself, and uh, hopefully our allies will show up shortly and. Uh, give us a bit of a hand. So here we can see them. Our allies, they're just about to uh, embark. So it might be a while before they're over to us. Uh, they're embarking towards the end of March, early April, 9.38. Ulster is still holding out from what I can see. It's at uh, almost halfway. And in another interesting development, I don't know why they're calling him the High King. I suppose he was, well, he was King of Alloch, but um, he's died here without children. And from what I can understand, uh, I have now inherited the um, the region. Um, oh yeah, and my son will be will be will be taking this region uh, this region afterwards. So that's handy because it actually gives us some place that we can build things in. We can't build anything in Ulster, and there's a lot of these um, these feudal buildings that we can't build in anything in either, because we're a tribal people. Um, 
And now our marshal position has came up for grabs because he was our marshal. He was a, he was a great knight. We we landed him pretty much because of his service there. And um, yeah, we don't have any of our other vassals are have good marshal. I think we'll we'll reinstate uh, Briog the poor man. He did great work for us up to now. And already, Ruokon has gotten more land. He's now up to four out of his five, um, four out of five domain. Now, a couple of people, including our son and the heir to Alach, have just been captured. Um, with the, the successful siege of Ulster, the Manx forces are now proceeding into um, Galloway, and they might come across and attack us here on the Isle of Man itself which we have just sieged down, I'm willing to stay here, because if they do cross, will they get a, a disembarkment penalty? I don't know. Or we could try to join up with our allies who have appeared. I'm not too sure where they're actually going to. We have a daughter. Any other good Irish names? Um, Gormla. Gormla is a strong Irish name. Well... They're all good Irish names, or strong Irish names. I think we'll go with Gormla. So we're not. We're going to evacuate the Isle of Man. We're going to pay 18 quid to come out here, and we're going to see if we can um, if we can get into Ulster and siege that back down. Or, at the very least, meet up with our allies. I have no idea where they've actually gone to. They're just sailing around here erratically. Which ain't no good. The Manx forces are coming back onto the Isle of Man. And in the midst of all this anarchy, the faction to install Green Grafador's daughter on the Irish throne um, has become quite powerful. Worryingly powerful. It's treason then. Kukarka has pushed his... I think it's his sister's right. She's a bold fool. Um... It is indeed his sister. Uh, yeah, his full sister. He is now pushing her demand to rule Ireland. This is the the son of Green Grafador, who he had briefly considered for the kingship of Ireland. Um, thought him maybe a bit too young. Of course, he's turned out to be an adulterer. I was hoping that he would serve me as a good and noble lord, and now he has turned against us at a very inopportune moment. And there is no way that Ruokon will um, will allow himself to be threatened in such a, a fashion. And so, the faction to install the Duchess uh, Dianaim of Augsburg on the Irish throne starts a war. And what a time for this to break out. Uh, rally the troops. Greetings, my liege. Peace be with you. You are a pretender and a tyrant. It is time to restore the rightful monarch to the throne. And we rally the troops, and we're at we're being attacked by Lyaknon, who created so much trouble for us. First of all, he created trouble for you by revealing your secret, but um, he was our spymaster. So, rally the troops! And Ireland is in the midst of a civil war, an extensive civil war. That is taken in uh, Connacht, which only contains Brittany. Uh, it is taken in Meath, and it is taken in substantial chunks of Scotland. Of course, they are the parts that are controlled by by Green Grafador's son, Kukarka, who seems to be leading this war. And um, Ruokon finds himself wedged between the, the Isle of Man that he declared war on, uh, some of his forces seem to have deserted. And now extensive troubles are brewing in Ireland. And while the forces are massing, Ruokon has ordered the siege of um, Ulster to be lifted. We're also trying to, to form new alliances. And actually Green Grafador had an alliance into this family as well. Uh, so let's see if we are in a position to invite him. Uh, you know, he's in the middle of a war himself. We're going to call him into, I think, the conquest for the Isle of Man. But uh, Rukon is going to see if, if he can march his troops in early 
against the um, the forces of Connacht. And at least deliver a bit of a blow there. Franconia, our ally who's kind of in this war against the Isle of Man, has came in on our side. And I think it's entirely possible that we're going to see if we can offer a white peace. Uh, they will not accept at the moment. Especially while they, while they have Ulster sieged down. So they do have a bit of the upper hand. Um, we're bringing in our forces against Alloch. And now the other 1,900 forces of Meath under the command of Kukurka are marching up to face us. So we might be in a bad position here. I'm not too sure what Franconia is doing. Franconia is... Yeah, I have no idea what Franconia is doing. And it does seem as though we might actually get hit by the uh, the forces of Meath in a couple of seconds. They have more men. We have a better, better army commander. And so while we are in somewhat of a good defensive position, we're going to park ourselves here and see if we can hold off this army coming in, uh, led by Kukurka. I'm not too sure who it's being who it's being led by. It is indeed Kukurka. He is coming in, in against our commander. And our commander has been wounded. And of course they're bringing in their other 400 troops. We're actually doing a pretty good job, and we would probably have won if it hadn't been for them bringing in that other 400. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to hold them off as well. So one of our great generals, um, who was married to Grian Grafador's daughter. So this is the guy that actually pushed Grian Grafador over, and we hired him as part of a, uh, a pop-up, or as part of an event. And he is after being killed in this battle. I'm, I'm not too, too sure is he fighting uh, for or against us. At this point in time, I don't really know who's, um, who is and who isn't on our side. Um, God, our son Koning has been drafted in. I'm not too sure if these guys are actually going to end up fighting with us now. If they're going to like join this battle immediately. Uh, Eamon is demanding far too much money. But if, if Franconia had done something, I don't know where Franconia, Franconia has returned home completely. Oh, that is a disaster. So they've bought in their reinforcements. They have evened out the battle. They're still losing numbers. Uh, we've gotten another alliance. So I, I married Ruokon to the... I think it's... I actually don't know. Yeah, there you go. He's he's betrothed to her. So we're going to invite this guy into the war. Um, He's also fighting a war. I really should check that in future. Um, I'm going to invite him in to the claim on uh, the Kingdom of Ireland. Call to war. He accepts. Well, hopefully he'll accept. We're not actually doing too bad here. We might We might come out of this. So one of our champions has been wounded and is dying, I think. Uh, there's nothing that can be done. Severely injured. And while the Battle of Armagh continues, we will very briefly take a look at what the battle, uh, the battle lines look like. So all of Ireland engulfed in a civil war. And we are being aided by forces in central East Franconia. And um, I don't know, is that Aquitaine or is that, uh, is that the, the south of West Francia? Ah, I didn't spot this. I think that's, uh, is that the, the Mang... Aha! I was wondering where, where the Isle of Man was getting all its forces for. I should have checked before declaring war on them. I should have done a bit of a, a bit more... Um, a better job checking. Do you know what? This is a dramatic battle, to say the least.
our champion has killed Chieftain uh, Rickon and wounded Flan Sinner. So that's um, uh, Rickon, or Riacon. Oh god, I can't even remember where Riacon ruled now. I think I think Riacon was the son of Finn Gunna. We're gonna have to check this afterwards. These were these were big. Those were big uh, debts. We're taking out a, a lot of their big names, but the the numbers are running low on either side. They almost have twice as many forces as us now. Whoever comes out of this, it's gonna be a substantial uh, substantial defeat on both sides. Okayad has wounded Kukarka. It looks like we are indeed, and Okayad has been slain. And it looks like we are indeed going to be defeated. There it is, the last few blows. My god, what a battle! The Battle of Armagh, the 30th of November, 939. Um, substantial losses on, on either side 581, on our side 651, on the side of Kukarka. Uh, they did come in with a, with a larger army. Uh, his health seems to be to be fine. He has been wounded. And if we look at our champions, two of our top champions were slain in that battle. We don't have a huge amount of champions, actually. Um, massive amount of work there being done by this guy who has remained loyal to us, even though he is married to, to Kukarka's... Um, to Kukarka's sister. So he's remained loyal to us. A lot of them have defected. A lot of them have defect defected across to the other side. And who did we kill? We killed Maul Shocknail's son, our nephew. Uh, Riacon. I think he was the, the, the biggest loss, really, because he was the, the, the chief of Oriel. Uh, so he was killed in that battle. Again, I'm going to see if I can make an attempt to to offer a white piece to the to the Isle of Man. We can't. If we were to surrender, we would pay them um, 14 gold. We would lose more prestige. Uh, factions targeting us would would gain discontent. We're we're not really in a position to um, to fight two wars, especially against an army 2,480 in strength. We need to pretty much. Um, Get our, get our men back to capacity, so I'm, go I'm going to surrender in that war. To the vile king, to the vile high king Ruokon. Uh, tales of your misdeeds, yeah, 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 yeah. So be it. So we've, we've brought that war to an end. Uh, there are dangerous factions building against us. It's predominantly this, these um, Cathar populace. We, of course, have empty... Uh, positions. I'm not too sure it was one of our spy masters killed in that battle. And here is our mentor, who I actually uh, just brought to court recently. So she is going to be assigned, and at what a point in time we're going to assign her. Um, our forces half the size of the combined forces of Dublin and the army of Drumahair as it returns to march. On Donegal, I don't know if I saw some of our allies coming in. The uh, the Franks are returning with forces. Who knows where they're going to go? Well, isn't this a lovely surprise? We've received a gift from our nephew, Flansena, uh, the son of Geralt, who uh, was supposed to succeed uh, Green Grafador, but um, died of the bubonic plague. Maybe he feels bad for all that's happening. He sent us some money, some much-needed money. Um, a, uh, a box, or a gift, a lavishly decorated box filled with gold. As I run my hands through the coins, I feel as if the room starts spinning around me. Anne, 
my breath grow short. How unexpected, and what a curious effect. You gained not feeling well for seven years. It looks like an attempt has been made to kill us, and it may have been very successful. If this skull at the top has, uh, has anything to say about it, you are at death's door. So we pause as quickly as humanly possible. I think Flan is actually our heir and successor at the moment. Uh, he is indeed. So we come and we take a look at the open election. Uh, we are still supporting our son Koning. We have very few. Um, we have very few people that we can actually do anything with at the moment. Um, Kukurka is backing Flansina. And Flansina is backing Flansina. The only thing that we can do immediately is return the favour and start a scheme to murder Chieftain Flansina. Uh, one person has joined our scheme. Uh, we're at 25%. We could invite other people. And if we can invite this woman. She will take 31 gold. She will accept. And I think she's going to bring a, a lot of certainty uh, to this attempt. And hopefully we can carry it off. Or at the very least, that, um, that Rukon can survive long enough. He's not feeling well. He's in poor health. The absolutely insane thing is that if Ruokon dies and we take over playing as Flansina, we're going to find ourselves fighting against all the allies that Ruokon has just invited in. So it it could be the uh, it could be the end of the uh, the kingdom one way or another. Our forces after the devastating defeat at Armagh, the the valiant defeat at the Battle of Armagh, they are retreating, and I imagine they're going to. If I can grab them, they're going to ooh, they're going to retreat all the ways into um, Dumbarton. They have, they no longer have a commander. We'll put Briog back in charge of them. He has stayed loyal. Um, another ally has came in on our side, and that agent has indeed agreed to join our uh, mission to kill Flan Sinna. I'm hoping. The bloody West Franks, or, or the um, West Franconia, is actually going to land forces somewhere. Because they've just been hovering around like a shower of idiots. And they are. Finally, West Franconia is setting foot on Irish soil. We've invited them into numerous wars. They're, uh, they're finally beginning to land. An assassination attempt has been made against the High King, King Ruokon, whose shattered army retreats deep into Scotland. His allies are coming in. Will it be enough to save his kingdom and secure the succession of his son? He would have seen Kukurka Moor elected to replace him, but Kukurka has came out in open revolt against him. The first ever Irish civil war. The French forces have landed at Dublin. And we will see how all this goes in the next episode.